Imagine the American West 150 years ago. These same imposing jagged mountains and sweeping landscapes, but also grizzly bears, 50,000 of them. As more people moved to the western frontier, they killed so many grizzly bears that the species nearly became extinct. By 1975, there were fewer than 1,000 grizzlies left in the region, around 140 in and around Yellowstone National Park. The government placed them on the endangered species list, and over the next 42 years, their number more than quadrupled. Have you seen them recently? Uh, this first time I've been here this year, so I, I don't, oh. I've just heard that, that they have been here, but I, okay. But this is the place to be, for sure. The, the fact that, that we've had a successful recovery of this grizzly bear population in the, in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem from a biological standpoint, it says something about us as a nation, I think. The fact that we have been willing to recover an animal that is so powerful that it actually can kill us. What is it, a bear? Yes, Do you see him from there? They're at the top of the food chain. They're the dominant animal in the, in the food chain here. They're incredibly important in the, the circle of life. Same like that. <laughs> and so to delete them leaves a huge void. And we want to be everywhere. Humans want to be all over the place. And so learning how to live in harmony with them is probably the best way to keep an intact e ecosystem. Yellowstone grizzlies have thrived so much, in fact, that in July they were removed from the endangered species list. And as their numbers have grown, so has their geographic footprint outside the park, making them more likely to come in contact with people. So given this expansion, can the two coexist? Some of that becomes more of a societal quest question, I guess. You know, it, it has to do with tolerance and it has to do with where, where do we want grizzly bears? I think those are elk. Steve Prem is a conservationist working to come up with ways to help people and bears live near each other. Uh, we, we work with quite a few ranchers trying to prevent conflicts with large carnivores and it can be pretty challenging based on what the setting is. And there's kind of some rolling hills around there. You won't know those cattle are anywhere around. Mm -hmm. You'll send the dog and it'll disappear. And, Ten minutes later, they'll come back with a little herd of steers. And we work with a lot of innovative well, ranchers yours, who are willing yeah. to try different things, like livestock guardian dogs, uh, like temporary fencing, like fladry, or specialized herding techniques, such as keeping the cattle or sheep bunched up together so that they're less less vulnerable to uh, to predators that way. Prem is focusing more on areas hundreds of miles outside the park that are just beginning to see signs of these bears. Conservationists hope that soon the Yellowstone population can reconnect with other grizzly populations, a way to improve gene pools and keep the species healthy. And this is one of the regions they'll have to travel through to do that. In order for them to really be secure over centuries from now, they need to be reconnected to, um, to other grizzly bear populations so they can function as part of a much larger population than what they currently are. Dean Peterson's ranch is just outside of Jackson, Montana, about 200 miles from Yellowstone. About a year ago, a camera captured an image of a grizzly near his land. Tighten him up a little. Get ready. How do I feel about grizzlies expanding? It's going to happen, whether I like it or not. It's going to make it harder for me as a rancher. Any place they have bears, dead livestock is a draw. And anybody who runs livestock has dead livestock. I mean, anytime there's a, a free meal, they're opportunists. They're going to take that opportunity. And he doesn't know the difference between one of my cows and an elk. He don't care. He just wants to survive. And if I were a bear, I'd want to survive too. So I can't. I can't hate him. But I will say that, you know, the bigger the predator, the harder it is for agriculture to live with it. But I'll survive it. We'll deal with it. We'll find ways to deal with it. And the temporary fence to keep everything except badgers out of the piles uh, is still here. And One of the ways Peterson is dealing is by sending dead livestock to a compost pile instead of letting carcasses rot on his land, which can attract predators. And we just this spring started composting livestock down here by Wisdom. 
And I think that's an initial step and a good step. But there's a lot of things you can do, and I'm sure there'll be more new ideas come along as we go. Give him a rest for a while. No ways to go on that one. Here you go, Darren. Prince Group also tries to work with hunters. There, you open your mouth. Hunters can't currently target grizzlies, but they are more likely to encounter them than most people. I've heard a few stories of them where a father son was hunting one time and they went out and they were just walking through cow talking and a grizzly come charging and they had all the stuff to spray but he just panicked and he didn't know what to do. He just like dropped his bow and everything and the bear actually come about ten, five yards from him and just veered off. You know, hunting inherently involves people sneaking around quietly looking for game. It, you know, you're not going to get yourself within shooting range of an elk if you're making a lot of noise and clapping your hands to scare bears away because you're going to scare elk away too. So there's just a lot of potential for, for conflicts there with, with grizzlies and hunters. Prim encourages carrying bear spray to repel them. His team is also building bear poles, taller than the ones these hunters are using so they can keep their carcasses out of bears' reach. You know, so that bears can't bears no reach them. Yeah. Uh, a bear pole is a very low-tech way of keeping bears from getting into things they ought to not be getting into. If you've got something in the backcountry you don't want bears getting into, it could be an elk carcass that you just killed, um, it could be pet food, garbage, your camp food. Uh, you throw a rope over this log that's hanging between two trees and hoist it up. That's what a bear pole is. Well, see how that one rope? You just need to get that, that those attractants at least 10 feet up off the ground and 4 feet out from anything that a bear can climb up onto and reach out and try to hook, hook that, uh, that item. But for now, it's up to the hunters to decide whether to use the poles. This is a good start. I mean, I, I think uh, people are seeing us building them. You know, they're, they're seeing them up here. Yeah, this is the ninth one we've done since Monday. Whether anybody comes out and makes it mandatory for them to use them is going to be a different story. But, uh, you know, that, that's, that's something that we'll need to evolve over time. Just decades ago in this vast western land, people almost eliminated grizzlies. Now that the Yellowstone population is thriving, people must decide whether to commit to keeping it that way. They're, they're big, they can be dangerous, uh, they compete with us for some food sources. So I, th I think it really shows a big commitment to conservation, to living with our wild wild brethren, if you will. Grizzly bears are definitely an iconic species for, for a lot of people. It, it represents a wildness and, and it represents something in, in the old American West that we have still a little bit of that left here. And I think that's, that's what people really appreciate about grizzly bears. Even for people that actually don't like grizzly bears that much, they would still say that yes, that, that is something inspiring to them.